John just asked me, how many wheels are too many wheels? Um, well, I don't know, but when I get there, I'll let you know. I, I, I'm not there yet. Not there yet. Welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish and today I'm gonna talk about my five wheels. It's like my three sons only with five spinning wheels instead of three children. And I'm gonna just kinda tell you how they came into my life, what I like about them, what I use the different ones for. And if you have questions, make sure you ask in the comments. And I'm gonna go in chronological order in the order of acquisition. So I'm just gonna take you through, you're gonna see some dust on some because I can't use all five at once. I try to, believe me, I give it my best shot, but that's not how it goes. They are all named except for the most recent one that came into my life. That will be explained later and let's go. So also just a little housekeeping thing before I get going, guys, there is a giveaway this month. If you have not seen any of the videos on the giveaway, I'm gonna link them below so that you know how to enter and you know what you need to do. Good luck to you guys. I am finding out that it's like really sad that I don't have something to give everyone. But maybe someday I'll be like the Oprah of the spinning on YouTube and I can be like, you get a paradise box, you get a paradise box, you get a camage box, you get a camage box. Wouldn't that be so cool? So in 2007, in October, I went to a get together at a local yarn store. They had just started carrying Ashford products. And I seriously was like, why would I spin yarn? That is crazy. That's so much work. It takes so much time. Like you can buy yarn in the store. And then I've talked about this before. There was a friend of mine who I didn't know yet. I just met her that night. And she passed around a skein of green and gold merino and tencel. And like I held it in my hands and I looked at it and it was like falling in love with a puppy. It was like, this is what? Can I do this? I wanna do this. Anyway, so I had talked about to my mom how like I wanted to do it, but we were broke. We had just gotten married a year before. We still had the two houses that we both owned. But we were broke. We had just combined households one year before. We still had the two houses that we both lived in before and they were empty. So we were paying three mortgages and we were really financially like struggling and there was no way I could afford a wheel at that point. So she actually bought an antique wheel to learn on herself and she was like, why don't you just take it to your house? So <laughs> this is how I found out that you guys, if you don't have experience and if you don't have a wheel and you haven't spun before, do not buy an antique wheel. It's not a good idea. Like I don't even think that wheel was meant to be spun on if I'm honest but I still used it to teach myself to spin. And there were times when I was like, I can't, I need this to just like go out of this house. I'm gonna put it out in the snow, just forget it. Nope, not gonna happen. So I kept struggling through with that. And then in March of 2008, uh, for my birthday, which is not in March, I was given my first wheel. And so that's where we're gonna start. Let's go. All right, so this is my first spinning wheel. She is an Ashford Traveler and her name is Lola. She is a double treadle, but I've always used her with just one treadle. That's how I learned. So, and I just feel more, most comfortable that way. She came with three bobbins, but she did not come with the woolly winder. Um, she also came with a stool and a whole bunch of Shetland. In fact, I still have some of that Shetland. So, Two years ago for Christmas, my husband gave me the Woolly Winder, and I really do love it. The bobbin's bigger. Um, it's kind of set up for a thicker yarn, but I don't change the orifice for that. I just use it as it is. I think it's fine. Right now, I am spinning eight ounces of BFL that I got at Rhinebeck in 2017. Yeah. And I don't know, I'm probably two thirds to three quarter. Oh, I don't know, I'm probably three quarters of the way done with the single. So, um, hang on, let me show you what the ball looks like. 
So with the Wooly Winder, I got three bobbins, but I had a normal size flyer before, and that actually will tie into a later wheel. So um, I would say, first of all, you can see this is the treadle I use because this one's all dusty. Um, I would say that I love this wheel. I still obviously use it pretty much daily, but it doesn't spin as fast without the lace flyer as I might want it to, and you can't use a lace flyer with the woolly winder. So sometimes I have to like treadle not with my normal rhythm. And so, but I do love her. I'll never let Lola go. She is, I mean, she's my first baby girl. All right, so this wheel is partially disassembled. That's why you have not seen it before. This is Sheila. So you can see I am missing the bearing for the orifice right here. So this is where I covered my mic, which I don't think I've ever done before. But anyway, I wanted to tell you about how we built Sheila. Um, John went ahead and ordered me a jumbo flyer and maiden setup and everything you can see it from Ashford for a double drive wheel. And we actually got that little motor from a secondhand shop with an old sewing machine. So we paid $15 for the old sewing machine. We took off the motor and it has to be the kind that you can just like remove. And then also I had the table, which I sanded down and painted and we put, we use for a nightstand right now. It's really cute. So we got quite the bargain on that one. Um, this is a bulky flyer for the Ashford and it came with a bobbin and I think I bought three or four extra. So um, it worked really well. And then that is the speed controller, which is attached with a Velcro because no one can say we're not classy here at the Clark's house. But anyway, I think Mary, being married to an engineer probably helped me out with this. So the way it works is the, um, the motor is attached to this little extra piece on the board. Oh, you can't go that way, Trish. This motor is from a machine that was from the late 40s or early 50s, I don't remember and it only goes in one direction with the controller so what we did was we made it convertible basically when it's in this position and it's turning the flyer in the whirl it's actually doing an s twist in your um, wool or your singles i mean usually it's a single that's an s twist s twist but not always so then we did make a drive band out of some fishing line because it's a double drive wheel and we want it to be able to slip and it runs on this little shaft right here that's what turns the whirl and the flyer it's pretty cool actually so when you want to ply so in order to ply when you want the twist to go the other way what we did was just center that shaft in the same place so that we could pivot the motor it does actually screw in with a little peg so that it can't move around and then you just turn it on again and it goes the other way so it's pretty sweet and it plies so great and it can hold a huge amount of yarn it's amazing get up she came into my life shortly after we moved here so it would have been summer of 2017 in fact i think i had her shipped here it was like the first thing i ever ordered so i keep her in this little backpack this is a paradise button everything that goes with gerta is in here so there's like a battery a charger a power cord just everything this is what i'm currently spinning i'm currently spinning the shetland that has soft silk blended in on Gerta. She's also a very hardworking lady. Look at my girl in there. Back here is the Hanson Lazy Kate. Um, Gerta is a Hanson, so I carry that in the bag with Inside this bag underneath her. I sometimes use this little plastic thing for a Lazy Kate. I think you guys have seen me do this before. See that gold knitting needle? I just put it through a bobbin and through that and use it kind of like you've seen shoebox ones sometimes. But it also helps me store those bobbins in a way that they can't get damaged or hurt. And sometimes I store other stuff in that little container underneath her. So that's why it's there. 
And here she is. Look how beautiful she is. She is a Hanson Easy Spinner. I believe she's cherry. But honestly, I'm not even sure. I bought her used. And I'm sure you guys have seen these before. So inside this backpack, she comes she came with a battery. Um, she comes with a foot pedal to control her. This is my orifice hook. It's from Paradise. It came with the Gems of Paradise one, and I just fell in love with it. The box. November 2000, I don't know, 17, I guess. And then there's a power supply down under here that I can just plug in. And then I believe her charger. Yep, so this is the charging stuff I use to charge her battery and her um, orifice reducer and stuff like that. So everything that I need for her is literally in here. Oh, here's her power supply. So that's one of the things I like most about this wheel is like she's so easy to take places. She's also so easy to control the speed on if I want to ply or if I want to spin really, really, really thin. This is not, I wouldn't say really, really, really thin, but it's thin. But isn't it pretty? Oh my goodness. You know I love my aqua. Ooh. It's for socks. Better get back on this too. See, this is good just for this reason. So Gerta is a single drive wheel. This is her brake and then her drive is up here. I think this makes her scotch tension. No, it's Irish tension when the brake is in the front. Is that right? That's what I understand. Gerta is my first single drive girl. Um, I guess you could call my last wheel a single drive, but it's really a bobbin lead. So I'm not sure how you would go about calling that. I guess it's still a single drive, right? So isn't she pretty? They're all beautiful. My girls are beautiful. All right, you guys all know Freya. She is a shop matchless. I usually keep her carrying strap on her because I never know what, even when I'm just gonna carry her around the house. I bought her used. She's also a single treadle. Like I said, when I'm treadling, I only use one treadle. And those are usually a lower price anyway, so it's like, yeah, sweet. Um, she is well used, but this girl is just amazing. She's converted to the new system that holds the front maiden up. And she came with like four different whirls and I think nine bobbins. So I have a lot of options and choices for ratios with her. And that's one of the things that I love about her. And she can spin real fast, guys. Like, let's see if you can see how small. Yep. That is really, that is a very fast spin right there. And I can store an extra whirl on the back, which I love. And she has her own orifice hook. I usually have one for everybody because I don't want to have to go hunting around. And so they're all like attached in one way or another. She needs to get cleaned up right here. She's a dirty girl. This is my last wheel. I bought her in October of 2018. I got her used and I'm gonna tell you guys about the experience. I don't think this experience should reflect poorly on Spinolution in my opinion. I think, you know, they've probably made some improvements. I'm sure they've made some improvements, but I had quite the experience. <laughs> it wasn't cool. So let me open her up a sec. Her orifice hook is actually in a little bag that I use to keep the Lazy Kate um, rods and the extra bobbin. So it's not attached, but it's right here with it all the time. So when I bought this wheel, and we'll see if we can do it, I have some video. I bought it off of Ravelry, and the first thing I noticed when I took it out is that this, the bobbin was like wobbling really crazy, and I have film of that, I will insert it.
So my engineer husband comes home and he's like, that shaft is bent. And I was like, oh, great, okay. So I had not even spun anything on it. I had literally unboxed it. I filmed it for you guys and you never saw it because I stopped uploading at that point in time. And um, I mean the unboxing. I filmed the unboxing and the first time I actually was like treadling it and everything. And you could see this bobbin was just like, well, you, you saw it. This wheel is cool. It's very different from any other wheel I own. It's constructed and it runs differently. Like it has an accelerator, all that stuff. You only put your toes on here. And then also, as I was using this wheel, it started to squeak. And I mean, not just a little cute squeak. Some people like that little rhythmic squeak if it's like small. It was grating and loud and not good. And I messaged the person that sold it to me and I was like, hey, um, did you realize this was damaged? I mean, there was no way it could have been damaged in shipping. I literally, the moment I opened it or the moment I got it together, could see that it was very bent. And she was like, you must have done it, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and she said the squeaking was normal. What we did was, I wasn't sure do and she was like I'm not giving you your money back it said as is on the invoice and I was like okay as is does not mean that you can tell me it's all perfect and then when it gets here and it's not functioning correctly you don't have to give me a refund or let me send it back or whatever so we went through the process with PayPal and they actually ruled that I would get my money back but at that point John had been in communication with Spinolution and I'm gonna be completely honest, you guys, because I feel like you'd trust me for that. The customer service part of Spinolution wasn't great. Um, I don't know if it's because I bought a used wheel. I, I don't even want to speculate as to the reason, but it wasn't great. So um, he, they put him in touch with engineering and the guy from engineering did Help them um, do a few different things we pretty much got the squeak resolved I think I mean you couldn't hear a squeak right one of the things we had to do was connect I don't even know what you would call this thing right here the two pedals are separate and they come up together in this little I don't know thing that turns see that and he said why don't you connect it So this is just like a couple of really big rubber bands, which you really don't even notice against this birch. And that helped. He also had to sand down a little bit around here and that seemed to help. So um, he, he took this thing apart, redid everything, and then he took this flyer into work. So he works in a place where they have an amazingly advanced machine shop because of what they make and I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that so I'm just not gonna but this adorable little old man that works in the machine shop who is like you know an expert and he can do anything he was like I can get it pretty straight so he got it within like three ten thousandths or something crazy like that to straight and now when it spins here let me do this you can see it's not rocking back and forth anymore so I got a okay deal on this wheel I thought I got a good deal on this wheel but then when we had to do so much work and like fixing and everything I didn't get a good deal on it and frankly the person that sold it to me in my opinion was a dishonest seller but whatever I mean I wanted to keep it because it works so differently from all the other wheels I have and I did. I kept her and I think we got her back on her feet pretty well. Wheel Hospital. She doesn't have a name though because that experience wasn't great. Does anyone have a, do you have a suggestion for a name for her? I would love to hear it. So those are all my spinning wheels and now I have a major yen to spin and I'm going to have to spin today. If you have questions about any of these particular wheels, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer anything I can. Ooh, I almost forgot. I also ordered all the stuff so I can go live with you guys, and I'm very excited. Why did no one tell me that I could buy a continuous power supply for this camera? I feel a little bit frustrated. 
So I ordered one of those and I got the cord to go to my computer because if you had to watch me on my webcam, you'd be like, what, why? No. So pretty soon I'll be able to go live and I'm excited. I can unbox next month's Paradise Box with you live. Isn't that fun? So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. And don't forget to enter the giveaway for this month. It's